let's work through some of these questions that I told you would be on the exam. One thing we have to do before we answer any of these questions is we have to find out what this population mean equals. This is just a fill in the blank that I gave you. This has to be done before we get to any of these questions. So to find the population mean, we just add the five numbers and divide the total by five. See what these equal. This is 75 plus 40 is 115 plus 45 is 160 plus 50 is 210. So it should be 210 over 5. <clears throat> Let me double check that. 30 plus 35 is 75. 75 plus 40 is 115. 115 plus 45 is 160. And then 160 plus 50 is 210. Let's see what 210 divided by 5 is. says 42. So something's not right. Let me um, add these t numbers up here with the calculator. Thirty plus thirty-five plus forty plus forty-five. Oh. It says one fifty. Let me double check that. Thirty plus thirty-five plus 40. Oh, 30 plus 35 is 65, plus 40 is 105, plus 45 is 150, and then plus 50 is 200. So the top is actually 200. And 200 divided by 5 is 40. So the population mean is 40. I'll put that right here. What are the sample means? To get the sample means, you have to add the two numbers and divide the total by 2. Each one of these 10 columns right here is a different sample, so this is sample 1, this is sample 2, this is sample 3. For each sample, you have to add the two numbers in the sample and divide the total by 2. So I'll do it with um, 30 and 35. When I add the two numbers, I get 65. And 65 divided by 2 is 32.5. So I'll make a little um, label here that says that these are the sample means. Sample means are going to be all the way across here. This one is 32.5. Next one will be 30 plus 40 divided by 2. You just add the two numbers in the sample and divide the total by 2. Because 
when you're dividing by 2 because there's two numbers here. We're just adding the two numbers and dividing the total by the number of numbers. You get 70 over 2, which is 35. So the mean of sample 2 is 35. What would this one be? 30 plus 45 divided by 2. This one comes out to 75 over 2. Which is 37.2. This one will be 40. Um, one way to do this, besides adding the two numbers and dividing by two, is if you can look at the two numbers and you know which number is halfway between those two numbers, that will be the sample mean. And some of the some of them can be done easily that way because if you look at 35 and 45, we know that 40 is halfway between, so that's the answer. That's a shortcut that can be used. Um, it might not always be recommended because it's um, it can be easy to make a mistake with some of these um, columns here because it's not as obvious what number is halfway between these two numbers. So if you don't want to make any mistakes, it's probably better to do it this way. This one will be 42.5. No, that can't be right. No, wait, actually it is. It is 42, it will be 42.5. And then this one right here will be 35 and 50. Oh wait, sorry, I was wrong about this one right here. If you add the two numbers and divide by two, you get 37.5. So I made a mistake by not use, by not doing the math and trying to, to do it in my head. This one will be 42.5. This one will be 42.5. This one will be 45. And this one will be 47.5. So I found all 10 sample means. So I'm finished with question one. Question number two says, what's the 80% margin of error? What we have to do is we have to fi find out what are the, the middle eight. What samples are the, the middle eight out of the ten samples? Because um, there's ten total samples. And 8 out of 10 is 80%. So when you see this question that says 80% margin of error, you have to find out what the middle 8 are, or where they're located. Well, if you just leave off the lowest one and the highest one, everything in between will be the middle 8, because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
and then the other two are outside of the middle eight because we have here we have the other two, which I guess would be nine and ten. Now we have we have the the middle eight at, of the samples inside of here, the middle eight out of ten. What we need to do now is find out which sample is at the upper end of the middle eight. Well, that's this sample right here. It's going to be sample nine. Then what we do is we take the mean of the highest sample in the middle eight, or in other words, the highest sample in the middle 80%, and we subtract its mean, its sample mean, which is in this blue box here, by the population mean. So that really the 80% margin of error is just the mean of the highest sample in the middle eight subtracted by the population mean. So 45 minus 40. Which is five. And all the 80% margin of error really is, is the distance from these boundary points to the population mean. Notice how this is the, the sample mean at the lower boundary of the middle eight, and this is the sample mean at the upper boundary of the middle eight. Both of these are five away from the population mean because 45 is five away from 40. Um, 35 is 5 away from 40. So both numbers in these two blue boxes are 5 from 40. That's really why the margin of error is 5. One number is 5 below, one number is 5 above. What's the 60% margin of error? Well, when we got the 80% margin of error, we had to start by marking off the middle 8 out of 10, because 8 out of 10 is 80%. To get the 60% um, margin of error, the first step is marking off not the middle 8, but the middle 6. So what numbers are the middle 6? Well, what we do this time is we leave out the lowest 2 and the highest 2. And we have, in between, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So if you have 10 samples, and you leave off the lowest 2, and you leave off the highest 2, everything in between will be the middle 6. So how do... What we need to do now is we need to find out... Um, what number is at the upper boundary of the um, middle six? So what we do is we find out which sample is at the upper end of the middle six, and that's this sample right here. And then we take its mean of 42.5, the sample mean, and we subtract it by the population mean. So this time it'll be 42.5 minus 40. So the 60% margin of error is the mean of the highest sample in the middle six subtracted by the population mean. Just like how the 80% margin of error was the um, mean of the of the highest sample in the middle eight right here subtracted by the population mean 40. So it's 2.5. That's a 60% margin of error. Now, 
notice how we the first time we subtracted 45 by 40 to get the margin of error and we this time we subtracted 42.5 by 40 to get the margin of error so each time we're subtracting the the sample mean at the upper boundary by the population mean you might be wondering why don't we just take the sample at the lower end and subtract it by the population mean well the reason why is because if you subtract, if you do it that way, you get a negative number, and the margin of error isn't supposed to be a negative number. So just um, subtract the one at the upper boundary by the population mean. What do we do now? Um, create an 80% confidence interval for each of the possible samples. How do we do this? I'll put a label here that says 80% CI, which means the 80% confidence intervals will go all the way across. What we have to do is we have to take each um, sample actually take each, um, the mean of each sample, and, sub and add and subtract the 80% margin of error. That's what gives you um, an 80% confidence interval. So let's do that, starting with sample 1. Um, 32.5 minus the 80% margin of error a 5. And also adding the 80% margin of error of 5. We get 37.5 no, I mean 27.5 to 37.5. That's the interval for sample 1, which is this sample of 30 and 35. To 37.5. You might be wondering why we chose the 80% margin of error to add and subtract. Um, it says it says 80% confidence interval, which means use the 80% margin of error. So it's really just because these two percentages go, uh, match up with each other. If you want a 60% confidence interval, um, well, we'll talk about that later. So we're just going to add and subtract the 80% margin of error from each one, and each time we get an 80% confidence interval. So, what about if we did it with this one, which is 35? <laughs> 35 minus 5 is 30. Thirty five plus five is forty. So the eighty percent confidence interval for sample two is 30 to 40. Now what about for sample 3? Well, we'll just do 
plus or minus 5. If you add 5 to this one, you get, um, wait, I, did, I didn't do this one correctly. Um, let's see. See if this comes back up. Uh, 